we're going to look at a relatively new feature to 3D Coat that allows you to taper your brush stroke with a good deal more control than you could previously. But before I do that, I want to show how you can use objects that you either sculpt and create, or if you have it on your hard drive, uh, if you have models, uh, 3D Coat will allow you to use that model to create a brush alpha from, which works in a very similar manner as vector displacement. So let me hide this particular object and I'm going to create a new layer here. And let's go to the object section of the tool panel under primitives. And you can choose uh, from the different primitive types here. I'm going to use a freeform blob and I can change the number of points here. Additionally, if I want more control points, what I can do is leave the primitives tool active, go to my models palette, go maybe to the default folder here, and I can choose the shape I want to work with. Let's just choose a regular sphere, and now I can add an arbitrary number of points, whereas in previously I was stuck with a few different presets. So, let's try three, three, maybe four. All right. So with that done, I can manipulate them by moving the edges, the control points, or I can use maybe a freeform lasso to select the points that way and I get a gizmo that will allow me to manipulate them either with a global scale, scale along an axis, rotate along an axis, and so on. Okay. In this case, I'm going to undo a few times here. And I'll turn on my axis handles. And probably want symmetry along the x-axis here. the control key to deselect that one. I'm just going to scale those a bit. Okay, and then I'm ready to apply it, and let's choose Smooth Primitive, there we go, and hit Apply. 3D Code's going to leave this in place in case I want to continue using it uh, until I select something else. So I'll choose a brush, and I'll also change my shader to something that's not quite so bright. And I want to do a little bit of sculpting here to shape it by choosing a regular brush alpha. And I'll hit the S key to make sure my symmetry is on. I'll check enable symmetry. I'll use airbrush. Right click and drag to scale the brush if I need. Create some divots by holding the control key. I'm 
we hit the space bar to bring my tool panel to me instead of having to scroll through here and under the adjust section let's choose move and instead of it moving in screen space I can hold the control key and 3D Coat is going to use the normals as the direction to move it in. Reduce the depth value a little bit, increase my brush size. And so now I'm relatively happy with this. I can store it as a model by simply just dragging and dropping. Now you probably want to apply it into your own directory or your own folder so that it's a little more organized than cluttering up your default palette here. So you can choose add new folder, you can rename the current folder and so on if you want. So I'm going to go to this folder that I've already used to create uh, some dragon scales and, and patterns. So let's name our layer because 3D Code is going to use that to name the object or name the file. So let's try uh, scale 03 and all I have to do is go to the right side of the layer. I see the little move icon. Just click and drag right into the palette. The next thing we want to see is a dialog for decimating it, basically reducing the resolution so it's not such a heavy file. So I hit OK, and you can see it right here in the viewport. It created a thumbnail on the fly. So now that we have that, we can go ahead and delete our layer. We don't need it anymore. I'll unhide this other object. And we're ready to create our 3D brush. I'm going to go all the way to the bottom of the palette here, the Alphas palette, which was previously named Brushes. So if you click on New, you can create using curves, and this gives you one option uh, to create brush alphas. But in this case, what we want is to actually use a file. You can use an image file such as JPEG, TJ, and so on, or you can use OBJ files as well, or lightweight files and so on. By default, 3D Coat is going to store it in your documents directory, 3D Coat. I'll wait at the bottom under Vox Stamps. And this directory is where you're going to have objects for your model palette, objects for your splines palette. Okay. Um, and then all your subdirectories therein. And again, you'll see all these listed when you click on this little drop list toggle. So, um, yeah, the Dragon Elements and our Scale 03 OBJ file, that's what we want. You can see the thumbnail for it right here. And now we get basically a 3D viewport inside of a 3D viewport meaning I can just click and drag just as I would here in 3D Cuts Viewport. In 3D Cut we'll create a 3D brush alpha just from this particular vantage point. So you can create a number of different brushes just from the same object. Okay. You have some quick alignment tools here. You can increase the resolution and adjust the depth, which basically is a slicing plane. Again, I could create just a brush alpha just from that one little vantage point. So crank depth all the way up. Go back to my quick alignment tools here. You can also right click and drag inside the viewport to zoom in if you need. You can also rotate clockwise, counterclockwise, and so on. So let's hit create. So now we can choose a regular brush. You can see a little thumbnail inside your brush that shows how it's oriented. You can use the 0 key or the 9 key on your standard keyboard, not your keypad, 
but the keyboard to rotate clockwise or counterclockwise. Nine will rotate clockwise, zero counterclockwise. And we want to check our depth. I'll just go ahead and brush. And you can see it replicated it a little too frequently. So under my brush options here, I want to check use spacing and I want to crank that value up accordingly. So I'll undo that stroke. I can also choose rotate long stroke and 3D coat will typically orient it along your stroke appropriately. So let me go to the very top and I can reset the brush rotation back to its default at 0 or 360 towards oriented vertically. And so now as I brush, it's going to change the brush direction to be oriented along that stroke. Okay, so if I undo that, it's going to keep the orientation that you see here uh, in the viewport. Rotate along stroke. So I'll undo and uh, increase the spacing just a bit. And you can see how that works. Let me reduce the depth value a bit. All right, so this would be a good segue into our next demonstration, which is the taper modifier. The reason being is that whenever you're trying to replicate scales or patterns along many of your models, you're going to want to change the proportions or the scaling as you brush. And prior to this taper modifier, it really was a pretty difficult job. You would have to use something like the curves tool or maybe uh, any one of the splines in the e-panel to modulate the scale. Now you can do it with just a single brush stroke. Okay, so we'll look at that in the next video. Stay tuned. We'll see you then.